Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the reading for the first week of April. I'm recording it on the the 2nd, April 2nd, on Sunday. And I was just doing some pre-shuffling, and the very first card that came out is Don't Let Your Past Hold You Back, South Node, South Node. Um, this is, of course, for everyone, regardless of whatever's going on in your life right now, but it really occurs to me that this is to do, for some of us, specifically with the transiting south node right now. The transiting south node is in Scorpio, and many of us have Scorpio placements, be, uh, especially if you're around my age, if you are the Pluto in Scorpio generation, right? If you're like a millennial, you essentially, <laughs> most millennials have Pluto in Scorpio. So there's a, even if you have no other Scorpio placements, nothing else going on with Scorpio, um, I know like several of you are going to have Pluto in Scorpio and you know the south node could have already transited over your Pluto um, or you're coming up on it and that's just really popping into my mind as something to be aware of. Um, for some of you it could be really helpful to just take a quick look at your transit chart and see where the south node is transiting especially if you know you have uh, Scorpio placements because that Scorpio south node is coming in to scrape over all of those Scorpio placements and um, really freeing, freeing you up, freeing you up. The thing with the South Node Transit is it can be very uncomfortable. <laughs> it can be quite uncomfortable because it can feel like you're being squeezed and pressed or that things are being pulled out of you, torn out of you. And, um, you know, it's not necessarily fun, but it is so worth it. So, so, so worth it after the fact. You're going to be completely free. It's like scraping away debris, scraping away things that have held you back so that your past no longer holds you back. It frees you up from everything that has come before. And yeah, so right now, <laughs> check your Scorpio placements because especially if you're right around the, like the week or so when, or even the month or so, I would say, when the South Node is going over, if you have like sun or moon in in Scorpio, right? Um, or even any of the inner planets, right? Venus and Mars, you're, you're gonna have um, like quite an interesting month of doing some deep, deep, deep healing on that area, right? Um, I remember last year when the south node transited on my Venus, my Venus in Sagittarius, right? Uh, I spent an entire month like doing like deep, deep, deep healing on my relationship to the divine feminine. So with the south node scraping through Scorpio, that's like really heavy, heavy stuff, right? We're talking like um, for some people, you know, it can be sexual trauma. Other people, it's... Um, other people having control over you. Some people, it's your inability to transform. If like when Scorpio energy gets stuck and it can't transform, it gets really unhappy, <laughs> right? Really unhappy. Um, but then also it can be difficult to make it release, to make it release. So you could be going through a phase where you, where you are like being, almost being forced to trans transform is what it feels like being forced to transform. So yeah, definitely definitely anybody with any kind of Scorpio placement, <laughs> the South Node is here to change your life, <laughs> essentially. Let's see what else is going on. King of Pentacles, excellent, excellent, excellent. The Star, there's that healing. And the Ace of Pentacles. So, <laughs> yeah, this is the Root Chakra healing. I posted a Starseed reading, you know, a few days ago, and Root Chakra healing came up in that, and I've been hearing other other people talk about root chakra healing. It just keeps coming up. There's an interesting thing, I think, this particular week with the root chakra healing. Um, for me, it's been feeling a little tedious. I, I feel uh, with all of the Aries energy going on that things have become really focused on the, like, my immediate environment, like myself and my immediate environment. And that is, you know, very good. <laughs> but for me, since I tend to be someone who's always up in the clouds, like always out of my body, always up in my head, right? Um, I've been finding the focus on my immediate environment to be a little bit boring. <laughs> um, and I I know this isn't just me. I've heard other people talking about how suddenly they, they feel like everything is just the same and everything is going to be the same for forever. And I have nothing to look forward to. Um, and I just do the same thing every day, like this feeling of repetition and this feeling of um, having a tedious task or just a boring situation to kind of to kind of work through for the, for the rest of the week, right? Um, that's like this King of Pentacles. It's It's this feeling of 
uh, I don't want to say stagnant because it's not that. <laughs> it's not that it's stagnant. It's that it's it's grounded, it's material, and it is like crystallized to a certain extent. We're, we're kind of like facing our facing our grounded environment <sighs> in a way that would be really, really uh, like comfortable for, I don't know, I, like just people like my parents, right? My parents are just so grounded, um, like in, in the moment, in the world type of people. And this is the kind of energy they live their life in, right? Like really just, this is my life. This is what I'm doing. This is what I do this week. And everything is just the same for decades and decades and decades, right? Um, but for me, and I know for basically all of you guys, right? Th this feeling of having to be too focused and it can feel almost like being trapped to feel and really, it feels like being bored. It's like bored, being bored with your current environment. So the thing with this is that this is definitely, definitely temporary. Okay. It's definitely temporary. We're going to ha be having so many shifts coming up, but it's like, um, it's almost like the energy has been so crazy since, <laughs> I mean, I don't remember the last time it wasn't crazy. Right. And the energy right now is crazy in its own way, but there's just this focus on immediacy, right? This focus on immediacy. And I think for people like us, it's just a little boring, right? It's just a little boring, but this is absolutely temporary. So the invitation here is to really take the time, um, like take the, uh, it's not really the time you have the time, right? You ha you already have the time. The thing is to push through that boredom and try to just focus on what is exactly in front of you as much as you can and try to find the enjoyment in it. Try to find the beauty in it. it like no matter how boring or tedious the situation is that you are in, um, because this is like so deeply healing to your root chakra, right? I mean, the star isn't really associated with the root chakra, but this king of pentacles definitely is. Um, this star energy, this, especially this depiction of the star, look at this beautiful cat, just sleeping, just being held, just being present in the moment. And this beautiful tree of life, you know, coming up over the top and this shooting star, right? I love this depiction of the star. And this really reminds me of a couple of days ago when I was really kind of feeling like frustrated with the tedium. I was feeling frustrated with the tedium and it was like making my brain feel scrambled. It's almost like, I mean, it is absolutely, it is absolutely easier for me to let my mind wander and to like travel the astral and to just leave my body. That is easier than like being in my body and focusing on the world around me. And so it was actually kind of scrambling my brain, like trying to be focused on my immediate environment. And um, my cat actually like really helped me with this. Like I was sitting there kind of like just feeling scrambled and feeling really bored. My cat came up and I was just petting her and like her energy just washed over me, right? And she was purring and I was like, wow, like cat, cats, cat energy so magical, so healing, so beautiful, so important. And then I was just like thanking her for, you know, for coming over to me and thanking her for being with me. So, I mean, if you have a cat or if you run into one on the street, take a moment to like just absorb their energy because, you know, cats are, in my opinion, one of like the most, <laughs> I, don't, does it, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense to say that, right? Because it doesn't make sense to say that one animal is more spiritual than, than another. But at the same time, there's something like unique and special about cats. And I mean, if you're a cat person, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> um, but it's like they have this beautiful connection to higher dimensional energy, but while still being so embodied in their physical body, right? Cats are so, um, you know, they're hunters and they're so connected to their bodies. They're so agile. They're so flexible and they are so like sovereign machines, right? They're so independent and they can do, they, they, they don't need anyone, right? They don't need anyone. They, they have like perfected the art of living in their physical bodies, right? They, they are, they're like a cat independently, a cat walking around living its cat life is completely independent, completely sovereign. And I just see them as masters of the physical, but they're also masters of the spiritual. It's like, I, I think cats are just amazing. Right? Um, and so it's like cats, cats. That's why I have been, I've been, usually I switch, I switch decks like a lot. Right. But I have been really using this Grimalkin tarot. This, it's all just cats. I've been using it a lot, like exclusively actually over the past few weeks. And I'm starting to understand why, like there is so much here that we can learn from cats and we can receive their energy. And even if you can't get near a cat right now, you can still call in cat energy, um, any type of cat. Um, but I actually do feel that house cats in particular have something to teach us here. And you know, the more I think about this, the more that makes sense because what is a house cat, right? Cats aren't particularly, I mean, they're somewhat domesticated, but not really, right? They're not domesticated like dogs are, then nowhere near to that extent, right? And I like my my hat, my cat is 
a total house cat, like a fluffy lap cat. Um, but I once saw her, she walked outside with me just for like a split second and she killed a mouse, like jumped into the into this thatch of grass and then was running back into the house with, with a mouse. And I mean, I was kind of traumatized, <laughs> but at the same time, I was also like in awe of her power, like in awe of her prowess, like that she was able to just like the, her instincts and her ability to just like do the cat thing, right? It, it <laughs> um, so it's like cats, right? They're they're like these amazing, divine, spiritual souls in these perfect mammalian bodies that, um, and then they they live in our houses, right? That they, they they consent to living in our houses, and like my cat sleeps in my bed, and she's snuggy and 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 so loving and beautiful, and it's it's like this really impressive mix of balancing spirituality and balancing spirituality and the physical, right? Balancing the non physical and the physical, balancing um, intuition and the body, balancing power, and even you know with cats like ruthlessness even right or balancing their power with their adorable snuggliness right this interesting balance and so i that's the more i talk about this the more i think on this that is what we are working on right now right B balancing this all out and house cats in particular know all about this they know all about this and finally we got the ace of pentacles here this is like reaching for that new world reaching for the new world. So um, if you're in the tedium, if you're in the boredom, or if you're in, because in the stress, I have been noticing that um, for some people, this feeling of, I just have nothing to look forward to. I just have these boring tasks to do. Um, I'm just kind of stuck in this sameness. Um, even if that feeling is only for like a week, like maybe you just have a week of boring, you have a boring week. That can be, for some people like extremely stressful like it can be like the most stressful <laughs> being stuck in the tedium could be the most stressful so there's this message here of like set some goals bit dream like make some dreams right don't let your past hold you back don't don't feel like you're going to be stuck in this sameness in the tedium or in this imminence right in this localized environment don't feel like you're going to be stuck in that forever and this is actually like a i feel it's it's like a it's like we're on a platform right now we're on a platform where we are sitting down to kind of assess where we are we're, we're assessing where we are so that we can have this opportunity to dream where we want to go it's almost like we're in this weird type of pause energy we're just kind of being paused for for the week i feel like this is kind of like the week right um we're being paused and we are figuring out where we want to go and if you actually look right king of pentacles on the one hand ace of pentacles on the other that's almost like backwards right typically you start with the ace and you work your way up to the king right but aces you know, just think of playing cards, right? When you play a card game, you often ask, is aces high or low in this game, right? Ace is high or low. In in this situation, aces are high, <laughs> right? You're, you're starting with this energy of the king, and you, which is like your crystallized past. It's where you have been and it is where you are right now. But then from the, from the place, from that pinnacle, from that plateau, you're working up to go like a new leveling up, a new a new beginning, um, a new goal, a new dream. So the antidote to any feelings of boredom, tedium, sameness, stress, like whatever it is that you're dealing with this week, the antidote is to dream big, dream big and understand that it's like, okay, maybe you can't make any um, material progress on that big dream this week, right? But that's not the point. This is the, the energetic dreaming process that you're doing. Where do you wanna go, right? Where do you wanna go? Because in my head, every I'm just keep talking about this, and I just keep referencing, um, or my guides just keep referencing the upcoming Taurus season with those infamous eclipses in Scorpio and Taurus. Right? They're 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 <laughs> soon we're going to be in Taurus season, so um, it, it, that that's going to be massively transformational. So th this whole week is this kind of beautiful break, um, and I feel like we have been through so much complicated stuff right? Like just think of how the energy was all through January, February, March, right? Like Capricorn season, Aquarius season, Pisces season. It was so complex, so collective, so just like confusing. Um, and so out there just all the time, right? And now that's kind of fading away, right? That's fading away as more of the planets every week move on into, um, into Aries. It's, 
<laughs> it almost feels like a little bit of like energetic withdrawal from from the energetic drama from the energetic drama it's like we're being um we're withdrawing from with we're withdrawing withdrawing and having withdrawal like symptoms interestingly from all of that um I, I, just, I can't think of a better word. It was like energetic drama, right? It's like for a while there, everything felt so serious and it felt so complex because it was, right? And it was. Um, but now we're coming into this simplification and into this imminent, the imminence of our immediate environments and our groundedness. And this is like a beautiful, beautiful break um, because the intensity is going to be coming back. And this is, this is like, this week is like a gift. It is a break. It is a moment to just where ha like where have you been where are you now and where are you going don't let your past hold you back this is where you decide how you want to reinvent yourself for the rest of the year i got big shivers when i said that <laughs> because the the ca more catalyst is coming more catalyst is coming <sighs> so <laughs> treasure island here you, here we are on this turtle right on this sea turtle <laughs> um we're going somewhere right this week is is this um this kind of tedious transit transition this tedious transition we're, we're like almost like we're on a boat and um it was funny i was literally just talking to somebody about this about uh like taking a really long train journey right i love taking like going on train rides but I was like, I don't think I'd like to be on a train for more than two days. I think after that, I'd start to lose my mind. Um, but I know some people like to go on trains for like seven days, right? Um, and I was like, that that would be too long, <laughs> too long, too long for me, right? But that's kind of where we're at right now. It's like we're on a train ride or like a boat ride that is really long. And even though this turtle is going places, even though your train is going places, even though your boat is going places, you might feel like you're not moving because you're on the turtle, right? You're on the turtle. <laughs> um, but look, you're like, there's this treasure chest on the turtle. There are treasures to be found this week. It feels kind of like digging deep, digging deep to find them. Um, you, you like, oh, my cat's coming over to say hi. Um, it feels like there are many things right underneath your nose that you might not have noticed or appreciated before, right? Not noticed or appreciated before. So this is the week to really dig deep inside of yourself, dig deep into the back of your closet, um, maybe have some uh, deep conversations with the people immediately in your environment. I don't really feel like this is a great time to be um, like, you know, doing online type of communication. Although, I mean, I'm often all about online communication, right? But I feel like this, this is, this is the, this whole airy season is like what's right in front of you in your physical environment, right? In your physicality. Um, and, there, and the reason for that is that there are treasures uh, to be found, like, like right underneath your nose, right? Something you have been overlooking. And it's not like, oh, you were overlooking it because you weren't grateful. It's like, no, it just wasn't time for it to surface, right? This week, there are things surfacing in your material, physical environment, right? King of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. Things are surfacing, treasures are surfacing in your immediate physical environment. And that is the point of this whole kind of slowdown and to give you the opportunity to kind of dig them up because you had planted them there. You'd planted these seeds there. You had forgotten these things there, just like this ring, which I had left in the back of my closet for like 15 years or whatever. And then I finally decided to take it out. Um, it's like things you had left, like things you had left for yourself. It, um, uncovering time capsules is what this feels like, right? Uncovering time capsules. For some of you, that is um, very um, spiritual in nature as well, essentially where you are ratcheting up through your frequency states, right? And um, if you find yourself hitting a, a like a level of frequency that you have not hit in this life before or have not, maybe you've hit it before, maybe you've touched it before, but you haven't stabilized it. If you are stabilizing higher frequencies, you know, this week, then you're going to be uncovering the little energetic gifts, the spiritual gifts that you have left for yourself in other lives. It's like, it's like when you get, when you stabilize X level of frequency, then the time capsules that you left for yourself in other lives when you were at that frequency come out. So you'll notice that in, uh, things coming up in dreams, um, suddenly things becoming clear, right? You could go to bed like stewing on some kind of problem and wake up and suddenly it just, it makes sense to you, right? Suddenly it just makes sense to you or the unlocking of some of your soul gifts, right? Under starting to understand them and learning, um, like feeling 
more empowered than ever to just trust yourself, to just trust yourself and to just trust what you know, to just trust what you feel, um, like really, really letting go of all of those feelings of self-doubt and just knowing like, yeah, I don't know why, why did I make this so complicated before? This is easy, right? <sighs> Higher power. Number four, we have, I know it's hard to see, we have a angelic type of being here. There's a face, hands, kind of cloudy wings, a little bit of a crown and light coming out of the top of their head. I want to, wow, that is, okay, so that is, um, <laughs> I can feel my crown tingling and that is very interesting because, you know, this whole grounded energy thing um, hasn't, isn't really like a crown chakra, you know, we were talking root chakra, right, this isn't really um, crown chakra stuff, although, you know, we do have this star here, right, the, the downpouring of cosmic energy, so I really feel like this higher power and even the kind of um like culmination of this star energy like the downloads the connection to higher realms right this higher power that's going to be coming for most of us towards the end of the week towards the end of the week i mean your time is your own you could already be in this right you could already be in this space of downloads and getting reconnected but i for me definitely like it's not today <laughs> it's not today today i i am in my imminence i am in my grounded life um, but this is really giving me, um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, to the end of the week when I, I am feeling, um, feeling the data stream again, feeling the data stream. And it's really funny, like, as I'm listening to myself kind of talk through this, <laughs> I, I almost feel a little bit like a spiritual junkie or like an energetic junkie, right? Because I, I realize it's like as soon as, um, it, like right now, I don't feel disconnected at all. I don't feel, it's not, it's not that. I'm not having any feelings of disconnection, but I just feel like I'm very much aware of the fact that the focus right now is on my physical life, my physical environment, and the things happening immediately around me. And I understand and, and I'm working to appreciate how, you know, the physical is is spiritual, right? There's no there's no separation between physical and spiritual, right? The the physical is a is a spiritual materializing into physical form. <laughs> um but there's something just about I don't know, just the way I am, right? Where <laughs> I, I just, I feel more excited, more interested by, and more stimulated by, you know, the cosmic data stream. I, I want to, I want to feel hooked in. I want to be constantly feeling, um, and experiencing downloads and insights and communication with all things spiritual and non-physical, just because that's what interests me, right? <laughs> and, um, that means when I'm in a week of, physical life it, it feels boring and tedious to me and it's like I want to get I want to get back into the into the spiritual game right I want to get back I want to get back into the data stream um and so that's coming later this week so I'm very curious to see what starts unfolding around like Friday Saturday let's see I want to read a little bit from this Conscious contact with a higher power, the presence of the divine, seeing source energy in all things, committing to a partnership with spirit. This card reminds you that you are more than a person trying to get ahead and make things happen for yourself and others. You have an immortal soul and are gifted with a human life through which a higher power can express itself. At this time, you need to be conscious of your connection to spirit and foster it through prayer and meditation. Ask, what is the highest good for all? How can I serve? Then get out of your own way and trust that there is a plan for your life more wondrous than you can ever know. You're always protected and divinely directed. As I was reading that, I keep thinking about the Libra full moon, which is coming up. I don't remember exactly when. It's going to be like a week and a half from now, so I'm going to talk more about that next week. Um... I feel like this energy is connected to that Libra full moon because, you know, Libra, it's like the scales, justice, balance, and all of that. And typically, you know, we think of that as balancing between the self and the other, you know, balancing partnerships, balancing people. Um, but increasingly, I am seeing Libra energy come through um, in, its, in like one of its higher um, iterations is the balance between 
you and the universe, right? The balance between you and the universe and you and the universe being equals, being equal partners. And I think, um, you know, for everybody watching this and for anybody tuning into this kind of, um, this, this particular type of experience, the Libra full moon is going to be unusually spiritual, <laughs> unusually spiritual. Um, because honestly, up until recently, I didn't really think of Libra energy as being very spiritual. And I'm understanding now that that was really not giving it enough credit. <laughs> I, I have like no Libra in my chart at all. Um, so it's an energy that I I kind of have to learn about slowly um, and by observing the transits, by obser observing others with Libra energy, because I don't really have any of it. Like, you know, I have very little of it. <laughs> um, so I think this is like a little bit of a sneak peek preview to that Libra full moon. Um, we're going to be exploring the higher spirituality of Libra and continuing on this journey of learning about self in partnership with the universe, self in partner partnership with the universe. Um, there's something else here about this. So also with that, um, the material in balance and in partnership with the non-physical right? Um, kind of what I'm seeing is, you know, one side of the scales is the physical, one side of the scales is non-physical, and they're in perfect balance, right? They're in perfect balance, and the, the kind of, you know, the actual part of the scale that holds together the two, um, you know, two ends of the scale, that right there, like that thing is spirituality, right? That like, that's just how that's just how I'm interpreting it, right? It's like there's this spiritual energy that balances the physical and the non-physical. And from this Libra perspective, there is no, there is no difference between, there, there is no spiritual difference between physical and non-physical, right? Um, it's like they are both equally spiritual. So yeah, I think this is going to be something we're going to be exploring all the way through to the other side of the um, Libra new moon, um, really understanding that the physical is spiritual, right? The physical is spiritual. So those of us um, who have sometimes, uh, I mean, I've, and I've definitely done this, right? I've definitely, definitely done this, kind of um, written off physical things as being not spiritual. We're really um, rising above that, rising above that and finding the spiritual in the physical. And I, and I am getting like really breathless. Um, like my, my heart is beating and um, I feel like I can't get enough oxygen. I don't know where that is coming from. <laughs> I don't I don't know if that's like just one person I'm picking up on and now I'm getting like a headache on the right side of my head. Very interesting. I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> just going to get one of these cards here. It it feels to me that maybe it's just one person watching this. If there's one person who like just ran up the stairs or something, or just came in from a run. It, it somebody. It feels like somebody is breathless. Somebody is breathless. Okay. <laughs> Romance. Cupid's arrow strikes. Um, yeah, perfect. You know, we're talking about Libra. <laughs> a new romantic cycle begins. Um, and that's really funny because I, I was kind of wondering like, what is this breathless energy? Um, you know, could it, yeah, sure. Could have been somebody running up the stairs or could be somebody falling in love, right? Falling in love. Um, this is that feeling of like being swept off your feet and like having butterflies in the pit of your stomach and just falling in love. And for those of you who are already, you know, in love and already in a relationship, um, you know what, now I know why this card came out as well, because there's something, there's just like a little story, I guess, of just my recent experience um, that is apparently relevant here. Um, because sometimes uh, when I know I'm going to make a video later in the day, I like kind of in my mind's eye, I like hear myself um, using specific examples from my life or talking about something. Sometimes I get specific cards. And then if it comes out in the reading, I know to like refer back to that. So, um, This is like, uh, how do I want to put, for some people, this will be like a new relationship or an, a new thing in life, like a new, new thing, but it doesn't have to be. And that is, I think the message for most of us here, where um, it's like the reinvention of what already is, or like, the, like something that already exists. Like I'm going to use the metaphor of a relationship, but this doesn't have to be a relationship. It's going to be whatever it is for you. Right. Um, but let's just roll with relationships. So this is like, 
a relationship that has, and it, it could have been a relationship that, that has been bad or has been challenged. It can also be a relationship that has already been amazing. And this is a leveling up of that. It's like, it's glowing. Like, like it's like, this is like you glowing, like you have never glowed before, okay? So this could even just be your relationship with yourself, right? You. Um, suddenly things feeling like they are glowing on a level that they have never glowed before. So my example of how I've been mulling this over in my own life is I've been like lately, I've just been noticing, I've been noticing my husband more. I've been noticing that he just like seems like even more handsome and more attractive than usual. And I've been finding myself like admiring his haircut, you know, stuff like that. And I've just been, I've been thinking about it, you know, and then I've been noticing him um, like checking me out even more than usual and, you know, giving me compliments even more than usual. And, you know, we've been together like nine years, right? And so, you know how it is when you been together for a while you can you know compliments can kind of feel like do they really mean it or are they just saying it right um you know and sometimes I wonder you know because we got together when I was 24 um and it's you know I don't look like I'm 24 anymore I do look different now so sometimes I wonder like um because it, it, st it started to he started to say things like you know I'm more um, I'm, I'm more attracted to you than like than I ever have been before. Like you're more beautiful than you ever ever been before. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense, right? Like I can't be more beautiful now than I was when I was 24. I was like, you know, my mind was just saying that. I was like, that can't be true. That can't be true. Um, but then I was like, you know, I know him pretty well, right? <laughs> and I can tell when he's being really, really sincere, when something is really coming from his heart. And I started to like, eventually I had to realize it's like, well, he really means it. Like he really means that he thinks I'm more beautiful than I was nine years ago, right? He, he actually means it. And I was trying to figure out like, how could that be, right? How could that be? And eventually we were talking about it and we were just like, you know, I think it's because we're both just feeling better about ourselves these days and we're both in a really good spot and it, it's like we're glowing from within, right? <laughs> Starting to glow from within and um, even though I haven't really changed anything about my appearance and even though he hasn't really changed anything about his appearance, suddenly we're just to each other. Like, I don't know if anybody else could notice, but it doesn't matter, right? We only care about, we only care about us. Um, suddenly it just, suddenly we're just more attractive to each other. Suddenly we're just more, more beautiful, more handsome, right? We're just like glowing from within. It's just this feeling of glowing, glowing from within and being more attractive than we have ever been before. And it's, it's really, it's just funny. And I have been thinking about this, about how strange it is, right? <laughs> how strange it is. And uh, I realized like that, that I had a whole bunch of limiting beliefs about how, you know, I was equating beauty to youth. And I was even equating like I'm 33 and I was, I, I was in my mind thinking that 33 is not so young anymore. Right. Um, <laughs> but, and, and so all of these ideas are coming up in my mind is suddenly being bullshit. Suddenly these are all bullshit ideas. And I was like, why can't I become, you know, <laughs> more beautiful than I have ever been in my thirties, right? Like what, 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 there's no reason that that's not possible. So, <laughs> you know, that's how this, this has been playing out for me. And it's like, suddenly, you know, my, my relationship is better than ever, better than ever, even nine years in, right? Just getting better and better and better. Um, so that's, that's what this is about. Something that has been like, well, however things have been, however things have been, they can just suddenly become so much better, so much more beautiful, so much more satisfying, even if nothing has really changed, right? Even if nothing has really changed, or maybe things have changed, but it's like, it's hard to put your finger on what exactly has changed because maybe it's been the whole journey of years, right? Maybe it's been all the work you have put in for years and it's like things finally paying off, things finally coming to fruition, or just you finally feeling satisfied, finally feeling like you can relax and just finally feeling good, right? And like, and then like you start to glow, right? You start to glow and you glow like you have never glowed before. And so Cupid's arrow striking, right? This could be you and yourself, you and the universe, you and your life, you and a new partner or you and your same partner just still with that feeling of breathlessness in my chest, right? Still with that feeling of breathlessness. So this, this type of energy goes all the way to the full moon all the way to the full moon. So I think I'm going to leave you guys there, sending you so much love and light. Bye.